cover section 5.1, it is related to angles. And it's the beginning of trigonometry, right? Because angles are considered the, like the building blocks of trigonometry, right? So let's uh, talk about this. An angle is determined by rotating a ray half line about its end point. So in trigonometry, an angle is associated with the amount of rotation of a ray, which could be considered this half of a line. This is called the initial sign, initial sign, by a rotation. You stop somewhere. This is going to be called the terminal sign. And the end point, it's called the vertex of the angle, okay, vertex, vertex. Now, notice that when you define an angle in this way, associated to the amount of rotation, you can talk about angles of any size, right? Of any size. Uh, this is very convenient. Um, when you study uh, geometry in high school, they talk to you about angles being formed by the intersection of two lines, right? But thinking of angles in that way is kind of limited because then you can have angles up to 90 degrees, I think, right? Or maybe 180 degrees at most, but greater than that, you cannot go. So it is better to think of angles as the amount of rotation, right? Associating the angle with the rotation of a half line. This is what in trigonometry is known as an angle. Mm -hmm. All right, now, in order to work with this angle efficiently, mathematicians got this idea of placing these angles using an XY coordinate system by starting always here at the X axis. So, they call it angle in standard position. You start always at the x-axis. So, which means that your initial side should coincide with the x-axis always, right? So this is the initial side always for an angle in standard position. Now, the terminal side may be somewhere else, right? So let's say you start the rotation and you stop here. Well, then your terminal side should be this, right? Terminal side. Mm -hmm. So you got the angle in a standard position, terminal side, okay? Very good, very good, guys. So that's the angle, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once you got your angle in a standard position, it's easier to work with the angle because you can think of assigning signs to the rotation of the angle. For example, if you do the rotation clockwise or, or counterclockwise, you can associate signs to that. For example, if you are going counterclockwise, counterclockwise, your angle should be considered to be positive, positive, okay? Positive, counterclockwise, positive. So, and why do you call it counterclockwise? Well, because it kind of goes against the movement of the needles on a, on a watch, right? Clock, clock, that's it. So this rotation in this direction, counterclockwise is considered to be a positive angle, positive angle. Okay, it's a mathematical agreement, counter, clockwise. And then again, it has to do with the movement of the needles in the clock, right? All right, now, the opposite of this direction of rotation should be clockwise, right? Clockwise. So let's say you generate your angle by rotating in the clockwise 
direction, this should be considered to be negative. Negative angle, clockwise, okay? Clockwise means aligned with the needles of a clock, right? When a clock moves in this direction, it's clockwise. Very good. And always, guys, remember the initial side must coincide with the X axis, right? No matter what, because we are gonna work with angles in a standard position. All right, so now, now that we have positive angles and negative angles, let's talk about the notation. Note, angles are labeled with Greek letters, alpha, beta, theta, and so on. This alpha, beta, and theta, they come from the Greek alphabet, okay? So that is why I allow myself to call it alpha, and this one I could call it beta perhaps, right? It's a common way to label angles. But also, since we wanna work eventually with triangles, when you work with triangles, um, you can use uppercase letters from the English alphabet, so A, B, C, and so on, right? These are the most common, alpha, beta, theta, A, B, and C. Now, uh, first system to measure angles. There is this system called the degree measure. Very easy to understand. A way to measure angle is in degrees. The symbol is a little circle, hollow circle on top of a number. And its definition is this. One degree is one 360th of a complete revolution. So imagine you have a complete revolution represented here by this circle. And you just take 100, one over 360 of that complete revolution, right? One 360. Imagine a pizza divided into 360 little slices, right? Then if you do that, then you got yourself here a degree, one degree, it's very small. Because again, imagine a pizza that has been divided into 360 parts, equal slices, right? And you just take one of them. This represents a degree. It's very small. All right. So now that we have the representation of a degree, right? Remember with a little circle on the top. Then anyone could tell me here, what would represent a complete revolution in degrees? If one slice is one degree, what should be a complete revolution? You can write it on a chat, you can say it. Mm -hmm. In other words, how many degrees is a complete revolution? Mm -hmm. Okay, a hint, look at this number. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, if one degree is defined as 100, one, one 360th of a full revolution, then one complete revolution should be given by 360 degrees, okay? 360 degrees, a full revolution. Now, based on that, anyone could tell me, well, let's represent it here first, right? This is 360 degrees, right? A full revolution, 360 degrees. Based on this, anyone in the chat could tell me what should be this in degrees from here up to here. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Yeah, Gabriela, excellent, right? Yeah, excellent. Very good. The half, right? If the full revolution is 360 degrees, one half of a full revolution should be associated with 180 degrees. Very good, very good. Now, further, let's say I go from here, initial side, 
x-axis right up to here. What will be this in degrees? Anyone? You can write it on the chat, you can say it. Mm -hmm. How many degrees do you think will be that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Very good, Gabriela, very good, excellent. Yeah, the half now of 180, which is 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees, uh -huh. great, excellent. Now, another question here. What do you think should be this angle? Look, one quarter, two quarters, that's a hint, three quarters up to here. Mm -hmm. You can write in the chat. Again, try the hint is right. If this is a quarter, 90 degrees, two quarters, 180, what would be three quarters of a revolution? Uh -huh. Very good, very good, guys. Very good, very good. Yeah, very good, very good. Gabriela, see you sharp today. Very good. 270 degrees, right? 270. Great. Very good. So now, mathematicians took these results and they did the following. They said, if you start here, you are not rotating, the angle should be zero degrees. You rotate counterclockwise up to here, right? Quarter, as we saw, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Then you continue here, 180 degrees. Continue rotating an additional quarter, 270 degrees, and then you complete the full revolution with 360 degrees. Now, it turns out these four regions uh, are important. So mathematicians have labeled them as follows. This is called quadrant, quadrant one, or equivalently Q1. This is called quadrant two, quadrant two equivalently Q2. This is called quadrant three, equivalent Q3. Somehow they are using Roman numbers, right? And this is called quadrant four, quadrant four. Wait, notice they go counterclockwise, right? Positive direction for the rotation of, to generate the angles. All right, so quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Try to remember this for your homework, guys. Very good. All right, now, now that we know, right? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Let's talk about coterminal angles because notice that once you complete a full revolution, things kind of repeat themselves, right? Rotationally speaking. So mathematicians notice that and they define coterminal angles as angles whose difference is a multiple of 360, a multiple of a full revolution, right? And they discover that these coterminal angles have the same initial side and the same terminal side, the fact, right? They start at the same initial side, they end at the same terminal side. And therefore, trigonometrically speaking, trigonometrically speaking, this coterminal angle should be considered to be the same, the same, okay? Yeah, I'm telling you this well in advance. All right, so for example, the angle zero and the angle 360 are coterminal because the difference of the two angles is a multiple of 360, is 360 degrees, right? And if you, graph these two angles, right? Do you graph the two angles? One angle is zero degrees, the angle, the other angle is 360 degrees, right? You notice that the two angles have same initial side, same terminal side, right? They coincide. Now, also 300 degrees and 390 degrees are coterminal angles. Since the difference, 390 degrees minus 30 degrees equal 360 degrees, right? A multiple of 360. So if you graph 30 degrees 
which is more or less a third, a third of 90 degrees, right? A third of 90 degrees, a third of maybe there, right? More or less. This is the angle 30 degrees, right? And then you graph or you represent 390 degrees. You start at the same initial side, right? And you're gonna end here. Right, 360 a full revolution, but a little bit more 390 degrees, right? So same terminal size, same initial size, they coincide. Very good. Okay, guys, but now we're gonna give you a method to generate this coterminal angle, because it's important in trigonometry to be able to generate coterminal angles in the positive direction and also in the negative direction, okay? So method to generate coterminal angles, it says add or subtract 360 degrees to or from the given angle as needed, as needed. Meaning you can do it once, twice, three times as needed, right? As needed. Example, suppose they say, find a positive and a negative angle that are coterminal to 35 degrees. Let me show you this example, and then I will ask you to do something on your own on the worksheet. All right, solution. In order to generate a positive, a positive coterminal angle, according to the method, all I gotta do is I gotta add, right? I gotta add 360 degrees as much as I need. 35 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 300, 395 degrees, right? So there I have my first coterminal angle, a positive coterminal angle. 35 degrees and 395 degrees are coterminal angles, right? Now I want to generate a negative coterminal angle for 35 degrees. So instead of adding, now I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract, okay? 35 degrees minus, minus. 360 degrees is equal to negative 325 degrees, right? Negative 325 degrees. Negative 325 degrees. And there I have a negative coterminal angle. So 35 degrees and negative 325 degrees are coterminal angles, right? Very good. One positive, one negative. So now guys, I want you to practice on this technique, okay? To generate terminal angles. So I want you to work on these two exercises. And again, remember the hint is uh, to generate positive coterminal angles, simply add, right? Add 360 and to generate a, a negative coterminal angle, subtract 360, right? Can you do that, number one? Mm -hmm. Try, try, guys, try. Yeah, coterminal angles at 360 to get the positive one and subtract 360 to get the negative one, right? Mm -hmm. As much as needed, right? If you don't accomplish your goal, when you add 360 and subtract 360, then do it again until you get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you got the answer, let's let us know. Mm -hmm. And you may use your calculator, right? Mm -hmm. To get this done.
Okay, guys, so let's do it together, okay? Uh, in order to get a positive coterminal angle, I add 360 to my original angle 34 degrees, and as a result, I'm gonna get 394, right? 394 degrees. This would be the positive coterminal angle, right? Now, to get a negative coterminal angle for 34 degrees, I simply subtract, right? Subtract 34 minus 360. And as a result, I get negative 326, negative 326, yeah? Degrees, and that is telling us that this should be the answer, right? You follow it? Try number two now, number two now, similar. So try this, please. You need to find a positive coterminal angle and a negative coterminal angle. Follow the technique, right? Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. I see some activity in the chat room. Gabriela, excellent, excellent. Very good, very good, you got it. Yeah, very good, very good. So um, for number two, again, right, since you need a positive angle that is coterminal to negative 45 degrees, the idea is to add, to add, right? To add 360. If you do that, using your scientific calculator or using some mental mathematics, either way, you should get this, 315, right? 315, great. This goes here, 315 is a coterminal angle for negative 45 degrees. Uh -huh. And now to get a negative coterminal angles, subtract, subtract 360, right? So minus 45, minus 45, minus 360 equal negative 405, negative 405 degrees. And that's it, negative 405 degrees. And this is telling us that the answer should be this, right? Excellent, excellent, guys. Here is another one, but we need another system called the radian system to measure angles to answer this question, okay? So let me explain to you about this other system called the radians system, measuring angles in radians. Mathematicians love this system because it uses the value of pi, the special number pi, right? And for mathematical applications, it's, it's very useful for formulas, especially. All right, so what is this, the radian measure? Another way to measure angles is in radians. Uh -huh. So again, we use this circle as a representation of a full revolution, right? Circle. Suppose your circle has radius r, okay? Radius r. Now we're gonna start a rotation at x axis. Why, Professor, you started? Well, because we're working with angles in a standard position, right? Always initial side, x-axis, right? And from there, we're gonna rotate, okay? So, you rotate this angle in this direction, okay? And you're gonna go over the circle R units, R units, precisely R units, right? Radius R, you go, Counterclockwise are units. You stop there, you stop there. When you stop there, you connect the origin with this point. And this slice that you see here, 
where this is R, this is R, and this also R, the radius of the circle, right? It's what mathematicians call one radian, one radian, okay? Theta one radian. This, theta one radian. One radian. Okay, so now notice the first, um, uh, first that this one radian is much bigger than one degree, right? It's much bigger. Remember the slice that corresponded to one degree was very small, but this radian is relatively big, right? One radian. Okay, when the arc length is equal to R, then you get your radian, right? Now, now remember that the number pi is approximately equal to 3.14, right? Uh, so more or less, anyone could tell me then, knowing that the circumference has this formula, two pi r, remember, circumference to measure the perimeter of a circle, you have this formula, two pi r, approximately, how many radians do you think we need to complete a circle? Approximately, approximately, right? And the hint, look at this number, right? Look at the value of this two pi. More or less how much is two pi, uh, numerically speaking, and then that could give you a hint of how many radians we need to complete a circle, right? Approximately. Mm -hmm. I see, chat. Aha, uh -huh, Anna. Yeah, very close, Anna, very close. But, um, it, think about this, right? This number pi is approximately, we said, uh, 3.14, right? So let's try to multiply these two. Yeah, 3.14, 3.14, and let's multiply, right? How many radians to complete a circle? Let's see, okay. This is 3.14. This multiplication, more or less, 6.28, right? So approximately six radians will be needed to complete the circle. Two, three, four, five, six. You will cover the circle. Approximately, right? Exactly 6.28, more or less, right? Very good, very good. So notice radians much bigger than degrees. It takes you six radians to complete a circle approximately, it takes 360 degrees to complete a circle, right? Or a full revolution. All right, then one revolution should be equal to, since the circumference is two pi times r, one revolution should be two pi radians. So try to remember that guys, two pi radians. Half of a revolution, Right, let's say you go up to here, half of a revolution will be then half, half, one half of a full revolution, which is represented by two pi, eliminating the twos, this is just pi radians, right? So half of a revolution, pi radians. A quarter of a revolution, quarter of a revolution. When I take a quarter of a revolution, two pi, after simplifying, look, half of this one, half of this two, pi over two radians, right? Pi over two radians, okay? So let's represent this in radians the way we did it in degrees, right? Remember in degrees, we started with zero degrees. Zero degrees is the same as zero radians, right? Then 90 degrees, then 180 degrees, then 270 degrees, uh, we came back to 360 degrees right, when we complete a full revolution. But now in radians, this should be zero radians. 90 degrees, we're saying half of a, a quarter of a revolution, sorry, pi over two radians. So this should be pi over two radians, right? Half of a revolution, half of a revolution we said is pi radians, so pi radians here, pi radians. 
one quarter, two quarters, three quarters of a revolution, three times one quarter, three pi over two radians, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see the equivalent, right? Zero radians with zero degrees, 90 degrees with pi over two radians, 180 degrees pi radians, 270 degrees, three pi over two radians, and of course, 360 degrees, two pi radians, right? A full revolution, one revolution. Okay, based on these equivalences, uh, we can think of converting uh, from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees, right? Here, conversion between degrees and radians. Uh, the method says to convert degrees to radians, multiply degrees by this factor, pi radians over 180 degrees. To convert radians to degrees, multiply radians by this factor, 180 over pi radians. These are called conversion factors. The idea is since pi radians is the same as 180 degrees, multiplying this by any number of degrees will not change its value because it's like multiplying by the number one, right? Yeah, that's the idea behind this method. But let me show you how this method works. Suppose they say convert 240 degrees, 240 degrees to radians, okay? So start, start this by writing 240 degrees first, right? And then follow the method. Let's say here, multiply to go from degrees to radians by this factor, this conversion factor, right? I'm gonna write 180 degrees on the bottom here to eliminate degrees and pi radians, it's equivalent on the top because we want to output this in radians, right? In radians. So degrees cancel with degrees. Here I will have 240 pi divided by 180. Advice, leave pi alone. Mathematicians like to see it as part of the angle expressing radians, just simplify this numerical part. For example, we can divide this by 60, and this by 60, which is the greatest common divisor. Uh, that will be 16 to 244 pi, here 60 into 183, right? Radians, right? Very good. So. This is how you convert from degrees to radians, right? You multiply by this factor. Very good, guys. Now, if there is gonna be an agreement, I'm gonna sh show you soon, that says that whenever your angle is in radians, you are allowed to drop this. So we'll drop this soon, okay? But let's go over example two first. It says convert pi over nine radians to degrees. Sort of the other way around, right? All right, so solution is start by writing pi over nine radians, right? And multiply this by the conversion factor, right? I want now radians on the bottom because I want to eliminate this radians, right? I want to output degrees. So pi radians on the bottom now, it's equivalent 180 degrees on the top, such that these two will cancel. And also notice that pi cancels with pi. And here we are, will end up with 180 degrees over nine, which is just equal to 20 degrees, right? Sorry, this we should go there. It's just 29 here, so 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. Nine was alone. Very good. Okay. Pi over nine radius is equivalent to 20 degrees, right? Very good. And here is mathematical agreement. 
you are allowed to drop, you are allowed to drop radians, right? In the sense of this, if you resolve this four pi over three radians, if you write four pi over three by itself, it means that it's in radians. It's a mathematical agreement. If, if no units are attached to the angle, it means that the angle is expressed in radians, okay? It's a mathematical agreement. All right, guys. So now I want you to practice, right? Practice makes the master, remember? So let's go to the worksheet and practice some. Let's do some conversions, okay? So let's say, try to do number 36. Convert this, I wanna make it bigger so everybody I can see. Convert this 36 degrees into radians, okay? 36 degrees into radians and hint, you are going to multiply by a conversion factor. We want to output radians, right? Radians, so it means that I have to eliminate degrees, right? So I'm gonna write 180 degrees to eliminate my degrees. And then on the top, it's equivalent by radians, right? I'm still writing it radians, right? But you don't have to anymore, there is a... Uh, agreement right so try to do that and try to simplify right simplify and show your answer simplify leave pi alone notice all the choices contain pi right so leave pi alone mathematicians like to see pi as part of the answer and you may say professor they forgot to write radians well we said right that mathematicians came up with this agreement if the answer is in radians you don't have to write it so that's why the answers do not show the units right yeah Go ahead, go ahead, guys. Try to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can move on. Remember to simplify your answer, right? For it to be, aha. Uh -huh. I see some activity on the chat room. Let's see. Let's check. Aha, uh -huh, Gabriela. Very good, very good. Excellent, excellent. Right? Look, uh, degrees, they cancel with degrees, right? So we end up with 36 on the top, 18 in the bottom, pi there, that we should leave alone, and radians, right? Radians. All right. Now, simplifying, uh, we can divide by two and then divide by three, right? Do this um, sort of gradually, but you can just choose the greatest common factor here, which is six, right? And then um, perhaps just do this, six, yeah, the six into 18, three, 30. Yeah, the, the still there is a way to continue reducing this, right? Yeah, turns out the greatest common factor is probably um, 12, right? So divide by uh, two, divide by six again, 36 is the greatest common factor, right? But you can do it gradually. Anyway, you can do it six into six, one, 16 to 35, right? This is it. I'm gonna drop the radians, right? Following the agreement, this ends up being just pi over five, which is this, right? Very good, very good. Try to do this guys now, so we can move on. Number 45, uh, number five, sorry. Convert this 45 degrees into radians. And the hint again is multiply by this conversion factor, 180 in the bottom, 
phi radians on the top. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Try, try to do that. Mm -hmm. And the answer is gonna come out negative, right? So it's okay. Remember, <clears throat> trigonometry, we can talk about positive or negative angles, right? Because it just means that the rotation was done in a counter -clock, uh, clockwise direction or negative angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try, try, guys, try. And then we will do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. See? Gabriela, excellent, excellent, right? Very good, very good, guys. Yeah, very good answer, uh, Gabriela. So uh, here, minus 45, notice the degrees cancel with degrees, 180 here, and pi, right? Leave pi alone. We are gonna divide by the greatest common factor, which happens to be 45, right? Or you can do it gradually, dividing first by five, and then by nine, as I did here, right? As I did here, one over, and this is just four. Pi, don't forget the negative sign, minus pi over four. Aha, a comment here on the chat. Mm -hmm. Halum, yeah, Halum also got it. Very good, excellent, excellent, guys. Very good, very good. All right, then the next you can do it at home. Let's do this the other way around now. Let's convert now from radians to degrees. Convert the angle from radian measure to degree measure, round to the nearest hundred of a degree when appropriate, okay? All right, so let's do this conversion. For example, let's try mm, the first one, seven pi over four, let's try this. And here they are telling you, right, uh, round this if needed, right? So we are converting from radians to degrees. Professor, how do you know it's radians? Because if nothing is written next to the angle, it means that it's in radians, right? It's a mathematical agreement. So pi radians on the bottom, 180 degrees on the top. That's the hint, multiply by this conversion factor, right? And try to get this done, guys. Use the calculator if needed, right? Because now you see decimals there. Mm -hmm. When pi is there, it's uh, in exact form, but sometimes they will just ask you to do it in decimal form, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, put this all in the calculator and then tell us what you get. Yeah, try to remember this for your homework. There will be a bunch of conversions there for you to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of choosing the right factor, right? according to what you need. Aha. Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh. let's check Gabriela. Uh, Gabriela, excellent. You made my day, Halum also. Very good, very good. Very good guys, excellent, excellent, right? If you put this in a calculator, this will give you this number. Uh, uh, let's do it so I can show you, right, both ways. This pi cancels, right? So all you gotta do is really seven times 180. 180 and then divided it by four, right? 315, 315, right? 315. Very good, guys. And degrees, right? Degrees because radians they can't. All right. So therefore, is this excellent? This one you can do it at home. Uh, maybe we can do one more and then we we'll move on, right? This guys, this is so that you can get this. Master, convert this to degrees, to degrees, right? So, which means that since this is in radians, I have to use this conversion factor. Pi radians on the bottom. Why in the bottom, professor? Because I want to eliminate radians, right? I want to output degrees, degrees, right? So this guy on the top. So multiply by this conversion factor and tell us what the answer should be.
Yeah, remember, don't worry about pi. Pi cancels, right? This cancels too, just these three numbers. Okay, so let's do it together so we can move on, okay? So you take your calculator, right? You take your calculator and just do this, right? 11, 11 times 180 and divided by 12, right? Divided by 12, we get 165, right? 165 degrees, which is there, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about complementary angles, supplementary angles, right? Complementary angles, supplementary angles. Let me give you the definitions for that. Turns out when two angles add up to 90 degrees or where two angles add up to 180 degrees, they have properties. So mathematicians have created these definitions to identify the situation when two angles added up, they give us 90 degrees, right? The first definition is this. Two positive angles, alpha and beta, are complementary, complements of each other, when their sum is 90. For example, 30 degrees and 60 degrees are complementary angles because 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is equal to 90 degrees, right? They complement each other such that they are up to 90 degrees. Now, what is important here, guys, is this formula. In general, if you have an angle alpha, any angle, any positive angle, right, and you want to compute its complementary angle, then based on the definition, all you have to do is this. You have to subtract alpha from 90, right, to find that complement. So alpha and 90 minus alpha, are complementary angles always. So this provides a way, a formula, right? To get our complementary angles, okay? We will see. All right. Similarly, mathematicians define um, the following. They say two positive angles are supplementary angles or supplements of each other when their sum is 180 degrees. For example, the angle 120 degrees and the angle 60 degrees are supplementary. Since 120 degrees plus 60 degrees is 180 degrees, right? They supplement each other such that the sum 180 degrees. Now, what is important here is that in general, in general, if you represent your positive angle with beta, then 180 minus beta, right? Will be a supplementary angle with respect to this beta, right? So what does it mean? It means that if you want to generate, to get an angle that is supplementary to a given angle, all you have to do is this. You have to subtract your given angle from 180 degrees, right? To get the supplement. Very good. All right, so let me give you an example of this, right? And ask you to do something here on the worksheet. Let's see, let's see. Uh -huh, I think there are two here. Let me do the first one and then I will uh, ask you to do the next, okay? The first one, number 10 says, find the complementary angle of this angle, this given angle, 44.4 degrees. They want the complementary angle, right? Complementary angle. Remember the formula, we said that in general, in order to find the complement of an angle, you have to subtract the given angle, the given angle from 90 degrees, right? From 90 degrees, that's how you do it. So let's do that. 
take the calculator and you do 90 minus 44.4. That is 45.6, right? 45.6 degrees. And turns out this 45.6 degrees will be the complementary angle of 44.4, right? It's the complement such that the sum of these two angles is 90 degrees, right? So you look through, uh, it should be there, I see here. Uh -huh. All right, can you do this one now, the number 11? Mm -hmm. Let me make it bigger. Yeah, I did it for complementary angle. Can you try to do this for the supplementary angle? Find the supplementary angle of seven degrees, right? Seven degrees. And remember for supplementary angles, we explained, right? That all you gotta do is you subtract the beginning angle from 180, right? From 180. So can you do that? I'm gonna write here, eight degrees minus this given angle. Yeah, use your calculator if needed. And try to remember these definitions, guys, for your homework that must be posted already in web work. They're gonna give you a bunch of angles that will ask you for complementary angles, supplementary angles and stuff. So just follow the definition, right? It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, let's do it together so we can take the break. Um, in general, uh, the numbers might not be friendly. So use your calculator in general, okay? Here, you know, I could have used mental mathematics, right? But in general, you should do this, right? 173 degrees is the difference between 180 and 70 degrees. 173. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the supplement of the angle seven degrees, right? So 173 degrees is here. Very good. Applications now. Let me just fix this. Applications. Okay, let's let's continue. Turns out when you work using the radian system to measure your angles you have access to a lot of applications, a lot of formulas. Uh, for example, mathematicians figure out that if you measure your angles in radians, you can have access to a very, very easy formula that will give you the arc length, the arc length associated to an angle. How that works? Well, suppose this circle represents a full revolution again, this is the radius of the circle R, and you decide to move counterclockwise this direction, some angle. Let's call that angle theta, okay, theta. You stop there. Now, if you are interested on in the length of this arc, arc, right? Let's call it S, S the length of this arc s then turns out there is a formula s is equal to r r the radius times theta where theta where theta is in radians in radians that is the condition okay not in degrees but in radians okay so the formula is easy to remember, S equal R theta equal, um, or gives you the arc length, the length of the arc, right? Very good. Now, 
how this works. Let me give you an example here. Example says, find the arc length along a circle of radius 12 meters, subtended by an angle of 116 degrees. So suppose this is 116 degrees, right? 116 degrees from here to here, big angle. And you are interested in this length from here to here, right? The length of this arc. Let's call it S, right? S. Let's apply our formula, right? S equal R times theta. Okay, R. R is equal to 12 meters, right? 12 meters. So you go like this. R 12 multiplied by theta in radians. But theta is not here in radians, it's in degrees, right? It's in degrees. So for the solution, first convert 116 degrees to radians, right? But that conversion shouldn't be difficult because we learned that this is just done by multiplying 116 degrees times this conversion factor, 180 degrees on the bottom to eliminate degrees by radians on the top, right? And notice I don't write in radians because uh, it's an agreement that you can drop radians, right? It's understood that you are working in radians. So multiplying all this, what do we get? Well, we're gonna get some decimal, right? Some decimal, which is this. I will show you. 116 times pi, pi is always there available, right? Any scientific calculator divided by 180. Uh -huh, I get 2.02458, right? Mm -hmm. Let's round it to 2.02, 2.02, right? Yeah, this is in red. Now, this is what you're going to use for your formula, right? So you're gonna put this here, 2.02. So S will be equal to 12 times 2.02, right? 12 times 2.02, 2.02. And this should give you the length of the arc, the arc length, right? 24.24. .24. And the end attach a unit, 24.24 meters, right? Meters, 24.24 meters, okay? Great. Now, now, uh, note, no. Equivalently, I'm gonna use this a lot. Equivalently, I could have done this. S equal 12 times, times the angle in radians. We had this angle in radians there, right? It was just this multiplication, right? So you can put this whole thing there. You don't need to do the partial computation, right? That's all I'm trying to say. So sometimes out of convenience, you can just put this whole thing in there. Usually they are going to ask you for the answer in decimal form, right? So let's do that. And you will see that it will give you basically the same thing. So 12 times 116 times times pi, pi, divided by 180, okay, 24.29, right? The other one was 24.24, but very close, right? Very close. So 24.29, notice, right? I wanna write here almost, the same, right? So feel free to follow either this method with a partial computation or this method. This one more accurate because we did everything in one computation, right? This one we did a partial computation. We rounded this before getting the final answer. So this more accurate than this, right? But almost the same. That's what is important. 
All right, guys, so let's continue then. Now I want you to do some work before we move to the second application. Let's go back to the worksheet. And using this formula, S equal R theta, I want you to do these two problems. First, this one, can you try this? Yeah, follow this formula, right hint, S equal R theta, where theta is in radians. Oh, another hint, notice that the angle in this particular example is in radians, right? So you don't need to do the conversion, just put it in and then get the arc length. Mm -hmm. The measure of the arc, right? Mm -hmm. Radius six inches, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Let's see. Calum, excellent, excellent. Very good, very good. You got it. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. The radius is six inches right here. And the angle, since it's given in radians, pi over three should be replaced directly here, right? Now you may say, Professor, how do you know this angle is in radians. There is nothing that says so. Well, there, if there is nothing attached to the angle, it means that the angle is in radians, right? It's a mathematical agreement. So this is it. So just multiply six times, six times, six times pi, which is available in any scientific calculator over three. And you will get the answer, 6.28, right? Inches, rounded to two decimal places, 6.28 inches. Excellent, excellent. In the end, you may attach the unit, right? Great. Can you try this now, guys? It's a little bit challenging, but I think you will be able to figure this out. Hint again. S is equal to R times theta, where theta is in radians. So this is in degrees. So you need to convert to radians and that expression should be put in here, right? Yeah, go ahead guys, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Radius, uh, I see here one unit, right? One unit. The radius is just one unit, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine units, sorry. Nine is not, it's here. The radius is nine. Yeah, this. Yeah, nine, right? And the angle is 135 degrees. Mm -hmm. Nine is the radius. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, guys. Try, try. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and try to remember this um, when you do your homework, a bunch of questions that are associated to finding the arc length, right? The length of the arcs associated to the angles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hint, extra hint here. First, convert, convert 135 degrees to radians, right? To radians. Because the formula works when the angle is in radians, right? So we gotta do this conversion first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's do it together so we can move on to more applications. The radius, the radius is just nine, right? Nine, nine inches. The angle, the angle is originally 135 degrees, right? But this must be converted, converted to radians. How? Well, by multiplying by this conversion factor, 180 here on the bottom to eliminate degrees and pi radians on the top, right? Pi radians. I am not writing radians because I don't have to remember the mathematical agreement. So S, I'm going to do this in one computation. S should be equal to the following, right? Nine times, nine times 135 times pi, pi is available in any scientific calculator, divided by 180. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh -huh. I got 21.20, 21.21, right, rounding to, to decimal places. 21.21, uh-huh, is there. 21.21. Mm -hmm. 21.21, in the end, you may attach the units you are measuring a length, so, the units should come out in inches, right? Inches of this guy. Very good, guys, very good. Okay, so let's continue with the second applications. It turns out it is possible to measure the area of these slices. They call it uh, sectors. Mathematicians call it um, sectors. The area of a sector can be measured using a formula when the angle is measured in radians. I will show you. So mathematicians discover that the angle, no, sorry, that area of a sector can be measured using a simple formula, which is this, I will show you. Area of a sector. So it turns out if your angle is in radians, right? And you want to measure the area of a slice of a sector, which is highlighted here in, in yellow. The area is equal to one half, one half R squared times theta, where theta as usual is in radians, okay? Make sure theta in radians. So we're gonna use this formula to find the area of sectors, okay? Here is an example. Finding the area of a sector, an automatic long sprinkler sprays a distance of 20 feet while rotating 30 degrees, right? Goes this way, back and forth. What is the area of the sector of grass the sprinkler waters, okay? Here is the figure that you can look at, right? Now, we're gonna use the formula, area of a sector equal one half R squared times theta, right? Yeah, let's use that. So solution here, solution. I know that area is equal to one half R squared times theta, right? But this theta must be in radians. 
So first, convert to radians, right? 30 degrees in radians is this, 30 degrees times 180 degrees here on the bottom, right? To eliminate degrees and pi radians on the top to get radians, right? Let me write it so everybody can follow. Now, this is going to be after you eliminate the degrees, right? 30 pi over 180, right? Radians. Now, dividing numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor, which is 30, 30 into 31, we don't have to write a one, 30 into 186, right? So turns out then that 30 degrees in radians is pi over six, pi over six radians, right? So that's what we have to use for this formula. So area will be equal to one half times the radius, which is given, right? 20 feet is square times theta. But theta we discover is just this guy, right? Pi over six. And I could have written this as this, right? Doesn't matter, right? Because if the answer is gonna come out as a decimal, Sure, it might. Feel free to do that. So now, putting all this in the calculator, right? What are we gonna get? Well, let's see. We have one half, one half, one half, times, times, parentheses, 20 squared, times, times, pi over six. Pi is always available in any calculator, pi over six. Uh -huh. Close parentheses, uh -huh. I get 104.719, rounded to two decimal places. This should be 104.72, right? 72, 104.72. I am measuring area now, right? So this should come out in a square feet, right? Square feet. Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. That's that's how you apply this nice formula, right? Area one half r squared times theta. All right, very good. So now, let me ask you to go over a bunch of uh, forms on the worksheet, right? We will try to cover as much as possible this this uh, different forms, so you will be okay with your um, homework. Let's start with something very straightforward here. Aha, uh -huh. can you try this? Number 14. Find the area of the shaded sector round to one decimal place. You see it there, guys? Maybe I can make it even bigger. Yeah, everybody can see. Yeah, now, uh -huh. better. Find the area, I'm gonna give you this hint, right? Area equal pi, so like this, one half first, r squared times theta, where theta is in radians. This formula is very important, guys. You can memorize it or you can have it written down handy, right, for your applications. When you do your homework, when you take your exams, it's an important form. It gives you the area of the sector. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Notice that for this um, problem, the angle is in radians. How do you know, Professor, is in radians? Because nothing is attached to this number. I know that it's understood that it's in radians, right? So you just plug it into here. The radius is 15 and compute the answer.
Uh -huh. I see some activity on the chat room. Yeah, always try, guys. So you don't have to be right on that. Halum, excellent, excellent. You got it. You got it. Very good. Excellent, excellent. Very good. So basically, uh, area will be equal to one half times the radius, which is 15 meters, right, is squared times the angle, the angle in radians. But fortunately, this angle came itself in radians, so you just plug it in, right? And then do this computation in your calculator. So then I take my calculator using the decimal scientific calculator. I do one over two times, times 15 squared, Mm -hmm. squared times times two pi pi comes in any calculator embedded so two pi over three and then close parenthesis very good i got 235.61 rounded to one decimal place all the answers appear rounded to one decimal place it's just 300 uh, 235.6, right? 235.6, 235.6, and in the end, I can attach the units. I'm dealing with area, right? So the uh, area should be expressed in a square meters, right? So making the answer this. Very good. Excellent. Now, Let's see the other one, this one, number 15. Can you try this, guys? I'm gonna make it big enough so you can all see. Yeah, very good, very good. Try to do this now. Mm -hmm. Hint, as usual, right? Um, area is equal to one half R squared times theta where theta is in radians. Notice here the angle is given in degrees, is 20 degrees. You have to convert angle first to radians, right? Convert angle first, convert. Your angle to radians. All right, guys, let's do it together, okay? So area will be equal to one half times the radius, right? The radius, which is 23 squared, squared times the angle. But this angle is 20 degrees. It has to be converted to radians, right? So the way we do it is by multiplying these 20 degrees by this conversion factor, 108 on the bottom to eliminate degrees, pi radians on the top, right? To output this in radians. The degrees cancel. We do the math here. Area should be equal to what? Well, let me see. One half 
times times 23 squared multiply by 20 times pi divided by 180, right? Remember uh, the alternative that I gave you, right? You can do this whole thing in one computation, right? Because in the end, they want the decimal representation. So the area is 92.327. They have run this to the nearest 10. So rounding to one decimal place, this will be 92.3, right? 92.3, 92.3, let's write it down. 92.3, we are measuring area, right? So it should come out in a square feet. Square feet. This is this guy, right? Very good guys, very good. Okay, moving on. This is another one here. This is like a word problem. And eventually I will do this sort of how, not in a straightforward way, but um, in a way that um, you have to solve an equation, but let's do this first. Can you try this, number 16? Mm -hmm. It says an irrigation sprinkler in a field of lettuce sprays water over a distance of 20 feet as it rotates through an angle of 145 degrees. What area of the field receives water? If necessary, round the answer to two decimal places. All right, let me give you as a hint the graph for this problem, right? They're talking about a sprinkler, right? Let's say the sprinkler works this way spraying water. So let's say this angle is 145 degrees, right? They're asking you to figure out the area. The radius is uh, for this sprinkler 20 feet, right? What they want you to do is to figure out this area, right? This area. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, do the, use the formula, right? Mm -hmm. Figure this out. Yeah, all this area. Yeah, hint, the formula is here, one half R squared times theta, where theta is in radians, where theta is in radians. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, try to compute that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always try to have your scientific calculator at hand uh, because for these computations, uh, mental mathematics uh, cannot give you the answer, right? It would be too difficult, right? You need to use a calculator. Uh, in our website, in Blackboard, the Desmos calculators are available, but you can use any scientific calculator of your choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, guys. So let's do it together. Okay, so we can see more forms. Area will be equal to one half times r square, but the radius is twenty, right? Twenty square times theta, times theta, theta one hundred forty-five degrees, right? But remember, we have to convert this to radians for this formula to work. So we have to multiply 145 degrees times 180 degrees here on the bottom, pi radians on the top, right? Yeah. So therefore, area should be equal to what? Let's put all this in our calculator. Let's see what we get. Let's see how this. Here I give you an alternative to deal with this one half. Sometimes it's just quicker to write 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5, right? Yeah. 0 0.5 times 20 square times 145 times times pi pi over 180, right? 180. Okay. Uh huh. 506.14. Rounded to one decimal place or two decimal places would be 506.15, right? 506.15. Uh huh. I think which is there. Very good. Very good. 506.15. In the end, you may attach the units. We're measuring our length in feet. So our area should come out uh, in square feet, right? Square feet. Very good. That's it. That's all this guy. Mm -hmm. Now, here is another one. It's a little bit tricky, but I will give you a hint. I, I think you should be able to do it. It says the following. The blade of a windshield wiper spray, sweep, sorry, out an angle of 135 degrees in one cycle. The base of the blade is 12 inches from the pivot point and the tip is 32 inches from the pivot point. What area does the wiper cover in one cycle? Around to the nearest 0.1 square inch. All right. They're talking about a wiper, right? I hope you have an idea of these cars. They have these wipers, right? This represent the wiper this way. Now, they say, right, there's a blade there. The base of the blade is 12 inches from the pivot. So this should be 12, right? 12 inches from the pivot. The angle, 135. 135 degrees, right? The yeah. angle. 12 inches from the pivot. So this is 12. But besides that, they say that the tip, this is the tip, right? Is 32 inches from the pivot. So the tip here, 32 inches from the pivot. Right? There we go. What is the area? That the wiper covered in one cycle. So the wiper is going to cover this area, right? You follow that? Just this part, right? So in between these two sectors, right? I hope it's clear. If not, let me know. This part, right? Not this part because this is not in contact with the windshield, right? Just this part. But now, this is a hint, right? For you to be able to do this. This can be seen as a big sector, a big sector with an angle of 135 degrees and radius 32 minus, minus a smaller sector, this one on the bottom, a smaller sector, this one on the bottom, with angle is still 135 degrees, but with radius 12, radius 12. So we're gonna call this area one 
minus area two, okay? I'm gonna calculate both. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can highlight this with a different color. This part is this. So we're gonna do the computation of two areas for these two sectors. I'm gonna subtract them. We subtract them, we will get this yellow area, right? Yeah. Yeah, let me do this as an example and then I will ask you to do the, the others. All right, so the area one will be what? One half the square of the radius, the radius is 32, right? Square times, times the angle, the angle, but the angle is 135 degrees. We must convert it to radians by multiplying by this factor, right? Pi over 180 degrees. This is this guy, right? Minus, minus the area two. The area two, the smaller area, the area of the smaller sector will be one half radius 12 the square times the angle, but in radians, 135 degrees to convert it to radians. We multiply that angle by this factor, pi over 180 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. This is it. All right, now you can use partial computation, compute this first, then this, and then subtract, or you can do this in one computation. I will show you how. Take your calculator, right? I'm using the decimal scientific calculator. I'm gonna start by doing this. One half times 32 is square mm -hmm. times, 135 times pi, pi here over 180, right? This is this guy, right? This guy minus, minus one half again times, times 12 square, which is the smaller radius, right? 12 square times, times 135 times pi, pi over 180, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh-huh. All this comes up to 1036.7 rounded to one decimal place, right? So 1036.7, 1000. 36.7. In the end, feel free to attach the units. We were measuring lengths in inches. So this area should come out in a square inches, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. So this should be the answer. So look for it through the choices. And it appears here, choice B, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, so far, we have seen a straightforward application of the formula, right? But sometimes they might give you the output value and ask you for the input value. Um, for example, here, I will show you. Mm -hmm. This is an example, number 18. It says, as part of an experiment to test different liquid fertilizers, a sprinkler has to be set to cover an area of 110 square yards in the shape of a sector of a circle of radius 40 yards. Through what angle should the sprinkler be set to rotate? If necessary, run the answer to two decimal places. Okay. Notice that here in this problem, Area is given, area is given, but we are looking for the angle, right? The angle. So it's not gonna be a straightforward application of the formula, right? Instead, we're gonna come up with an equation and we're gonna solve for the angle. You will see, okay? All right, so let's start by drawing this diagram, right? Representing the sector of a circle. They say that the area given is 110 square yards, right? So yards square, all right? This is the 
sector, right? Let's represent with theta the angle that we don't know, right? But recall, area and angle are related this way, right? Together with the radius. The radius, by the way, is 40 yards, so 40 here. So area is equal to one half R squared, R squared times theta, right? R squared times theta. I have the area, the area is 110, right? One half radius, I have also 40 yards, right? 40 yards, yards. Mm -hmm. it's right here, yards also, so now I get confused. Yards square, right? Yeah. All right. So four yards is square times theta. Theta I don't have, but I can find it, right? So now, now solve four theta, right? Four theta. We gotta isolate theta, right? Let's do it carefully. One half times four d is square. What is this? Let's use our calculator. One half times 40 squared, right? 40 squared is 800, 800. Mm -hmm. 800 times theta, right? Now I need to solve for theta. So all I gotta do is this. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 800, right, to get theta by itself, right? So theta should be equal to this guy, 110 divided by 800. So 110, 110 divided by 800. Mm -hmm. And that is 0 0.1375, right? 0 0.1375, let's write it as it is, 0. 1375. And this is in radians, right? Radians. Radians, right? But now the answer must be in degrees. So now convert, now convert 0 0.1375 radians two degrees, right? Two degrees. How we do that, Professor? Well, we we, we we went over a technique, right? It's just this. Pi radians on the bottom, 180 degrees on the top, right? So this should give us our angle in degree, right? Radians cancel. So let's put this in the calculator, 0 0.1375 times 180 divided by pi. Uh-huh, 7.878, right? Rounded to two decimal places, 7.88, right? 7.88 degrees now, degrees, right? 7.88 degrees. So you look through, there we go, right? You find it there. Very good. So look at this problem, guys, when you go over your homework, sometimes, again, it's not going to be a straightforward or a direct application of the formula. Instead, they will give you the output value, the area, and then you will have to solve either for R or for theta, right? In this case, we have to solve for theta. So follow this when you do your homework. To finish, probably I could, you could try this one, try this one, and then uh, in the end I will do it. We will do it together. So try this, this. All right, try this, guys. As part of an experiment to test different liquid fertilizers, a sprinkler has to be set to cover an area of 150 square yards in the shape of a sector of a circle of radius 40 yards. Through what angle should the sprinkler be set? to rotate, if necessary, run your answer to, to decimal places. I'm gonna leave this on 
for you to look at as a reference, right? But try, try this guy. It's similar, it's similar, right? You have to solve for the angle, for the angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once you find your answer, since it comes up in radians, then you have to uh, convert it to degrees, right? Convert it to degrees. Mm -hmm. Try, try, guys. Let's go and take a look at this. And this is going to help you on your homework that is already posted in your account, okay? Mm -hmm. Some problems they will ask you to find the radius or find the, the angle. Mm -hmm. so follow this. Okay, guys, so let me just modify this a little bit so it will be better. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's try to do it together, okay, to finish up. Mm -hmm. So as part of an experiment to test different liquid fertilizers, splinker has to be set to be covered an area of 150 square yards. So let's draw a diagram, right? Diagram here. Mm -hmm. Let's say this is the sprinkler. This is the area it covers, the angle theta that we don't know. But we know that the area is 150 is square yards, right? Square yards, square yards, yards square. This is the area. And we know that the radius is 40 yards, 40 yards. We don't know the angle. But recall, there is a formula that relates the area of this circular sector with the radius and the angle in radians, right? This is the formula. Now let's replace what we have and let's find what we don't have. We have the area is 150 square yards. Let's replace it here. One half of the radius. The radius is 40 yards squared times theta, right? Okay, now, now solve for data, right? In other words, isolate data. Mm -hmm. So isolate data. Very good. So 150 equal to one half of 40 squared. Now let's calculate that. One half times 40 squared, right? Uh -huh, that's 800, 800. 800 here times theta, right? Times theta. Next, let's divide both sides of our equation by 800, right? Mm -hmm. Hundred. 
and that should give us the value of theta in radians, in radians, okay? This is cancels. Theta equal to 150 over 800, okay? 0 0.1875, right? Let's write it as it is, 0 0.1875. 0 0.1875. This is in radians, right? Radians. We don't have to write it, but it's in radians. But now convert, convert 0 0.1875 radians to degrees, right? Because the answer is in degrees. Not a problem because I know that this conversion can be done this way. I can multiply this by pi radians on the bottom to eliminate radians and then 180 degrees on the top to output this in degrees, right? This cancels. So if you convert this to degrees, this should be 0 0.1875 times 180 divided by pi, right? Ah, 10.74, 10.74 is there. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent, 10.74 degrees, right? Degrees, 10.74 degrees. This is theta, right? The angle needed to cover 150 square yards is for the sprinkler, right? With radius 40 yards. Very good, guys. Okay, guys.